It's Easter. So I thought it looked like a bunny. Am I close? Hi, it's me, JD, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're doing Easter cards. Out of all of the holiday themed card making videos that I have done, I have yet to do an Easter card. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I never got around to it, I guess. I've done St. Patrick's Day and then Mother's Day, and then I just forgot all about Easter in the middle. This video is also a part of the Simon Says Stamp Blog Club, so if you're interested in that, be sure to click down below in the description box for the next stop on the hop. Hop, 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 hop. I mean, a blog hop for Easter. I'm gonna go crazy with the puns. I apologize in advance. So, hopping right along, we are going to make Easter cards. I have some fun Easter themed products and I think I'm gonna do some techniques that I don't usually do on this video just because it's Easter. And you know, you ask yourself, why does someone need a Easter card? Well, because somebody does, somebody does, somebody loves you. And if, even if you're not religious, I think Easter is just a fun time to celebrate anyway. Therefore, sit back, subscribe, it's just so easy to, you know, wish everyone a happy Easter. Don't worry, be happy. Hop in the name of love. I said a hip hop. <laughs> I need to stop with the Easter puns, even though they're all excellent. I'm just so excited to be so extra on my Easter card video. Okay, all right, no, really, to crafting. Let's spring into action with this spring up inspired birthday card. I've got this really cool set of stencils that form 3D like tulips. Tulips and daffodils and daisies are like the unofficial flowers of spring, which I will use a daffodil in a little bit. Um, but first we're gonna start with this tulip stencil. I think I have it figured out. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so I started with the most, um, the first stencil that had the most solid looking image and then I ink blend that and then I moved on to the second layering stencil and okay it started to look 3D now and then where I had a little bit of confusion was this uh, leaf part of the stencil but I think I made it work. To add to my um, tulip background I wanted to color in the sky a little just to help ground these tulips so they're not floating in thin air I'll just pop on my die cut sentiment and this card came together in no time with a help of some stencil and some ink blending and a die cut so if you're looking for a springy birthday card that took maybe 10 to 15 minutes to put together then this is definitely the card for you now here's another card making hack you guys know I love my card making hacks, but I lost a dot over the I in the word birthday, so I just used some Nuvo drops um, to make my dot over the I a little dimensional. I'm gonna put this on some fog note card, and this birthday card is finished. Now here was that daffodil I was talking about earlier. I wanted to do some ink smooshing. And what ink smooshing is, is that I smoosh some inks on my media mat and then I apply it to my watercolor cardstock. Now using watercolor cardstock is important because there's gonna be a lot of water in this and you know, you don't want your paper to deteriorate as quickly as regular cardstock does. I'm trying to apply this Distress Oxide ink as kind of organically as possible, make it look real free form. Um, I thought about using the paintbrush, but then you know I'd have to mess with paint strokes and I just thought I want to have fun with it, you know? So I just even smooshed the watercolor cardstock on where I smooshed the ink to. This technique is definitely for those that, you know, maybe not be so experienced with watercolors, but still want that watercolor effect or those that just like to get messy. As you can see, the color goes on real light. So if you want to deepen the color and make it really intense, then you'll have to let it dry and do this in layers. I'm just using an acrylic block to help spread some of that ink around. 
my watercolor paper is starting to buckle and curl so I'll just set this aside to dry while I work on my die cut piece and my die cut piece is this beautiful daffodil that is really really thin and really really delicate so instead of doing normal ink blending movements like swishes I'm just pouncing on some ink as to not like rip it or damage my little daffodil I think die cuts just have been getting skinnier and skinnier and more thin lines which I mean it makes for a beautiful die cut but man is it hard to do some techniques on it um, anyway so I'll go back to my second layer of distress oxide ink on my background and it's getting messier and messier and I'm just trying to sop up all of that extra ink mainly because I don't want to clean it <laughs> at the end I do have this handy dandy media mat though that pretty much wipes clean um, with any distress oxide ink or dye ink or pigment ink I put on there. So back to my really really thin die cut. I put some adhesive on the back and I just smoosh it on my media mat to get rid of any excess adhesive and then I place it onto my dry background. When you have liquid adhesive on a media mat, you definitely want to make sure you clean that as quickly as possible so it doesn't dry and damage your mat. Next, I'll add my little sentiment that says Happy Easter. And this is a very simple yet very fun to do Easter card. I really like that lavender color from the previous card so much, I decided to make a monotone lavender card for this next handmade Easter greeting card. So I got my giant flower stamp, also from Simon Says Stamp. Uh, I don't think this is from their Easter release or their latest release, but um, it's on their shop somewhere. <laughs> I'll link it down below. And I've used this stamp before and it just stamps the most intricate, detailed, gorgeous flower arrangement that could be used really for any occasion. And I stamped that with some, or I inked that with some Versmark ink and stamped it onto my note card. This note card is light enough for me to write a message on the inside. That's why I'm applying all these techniques to the note card instead of making a card front for it. Next, I'll pour on some white embossing powder and then I'll heat set that to melt all of this powder down. As I'm watching the powder melt, I'm realizing that this card looks good, but it could look better. So I'm going to uh, deepen this lavender color with some more Distress Oxide ink in a similar color family, but not the exact same color. And what this does, it just really um, fo like brings a focus to the stamped flower image and just intensifies this lavender color, which is really light otherwise, but it looks really um, rich and saturated here once I add this ink. After ink blending all that ink on, I realized that, hey, I don't have a sentiment. So I'm going to dry my note card down, make sure it's bone dry, even wipe it with my embossing pouch because I'm going to uh, stamp and heat emboss my sentiment over the top. And I really uh, don't want to um, have the any messy heat embossing because I just inked this background. So once it's nice and dry, I'll stamp ink my stamp, stamp that on, and it's really thin, so I'm double checking to make sure it's on there, which it is. Um, I think this image is from CZ Designs, and I always love her thin lines, uh, sentiments, and images. And then I'll go ahead and melt this powder down with my really hot heat gun. And I was like, I made this card better, but let's make it even better. So um, once I took off that piece of tape, I folded my note card, I'm going to add some watercolor splashes. And I've got some fun metallic watercolors. I sprayed some water into that and I'm, use and I'm using my paintbrush and acrylic block to help make these metallic uh, watercolor splatters all over the front of my note card. When you do this technique over Distress Oxide ink, it adds like this glowing effect to your project. It's really cool in person. It's hard to see on camera, but in real life, it looks like my flowers and my sentiment is glowing, which is super cool. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I want to wish you a happy Easter. If you don't celebrate Easter, well, a happy springtime to you and have an egg-cellent day. <laughs>